Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hookup, right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and live on your Saltwater Guide video only, no no audio. Uh, but uh, we have Captain Dave Hansen, your Saltwater Guide here, and Captain Al Clowers um, from Clapton Clowers Charters here, giving us all the real information. Dave's just full of the malarkey. Yeah. Al's got the real stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why I exactly. Right next to Yeah, you. and we're giving away a couple great prizes. Boy, man, you're not kidding if you didn't catch the beginning of the show. How about this? At the end of today's show, one lucky caller or texter is going to win a two three-quarter day pass set. So two three-quarter day passes from Dana War Sport Fishing and a four-pack of the brand new Promar GT4 fluorocarbon. That is a killer, killer prize. Yeah, a nice double package for a caller or a texter. We'll flip the coin at the end of the show. This is this is the coin, by the yeah, way. It we really should is show a thing. the coin if you're looking on the audio. It's a, it's a, this is the coin, and uh, Captain Dave will flip it at the end of the show, and it says C and T on either side, and uh, call we'll see it, if it's a caller or a texter. Call or a texter. Yeah. Again, if you want to get your chance to get through, it's 213-432-1090 on the phones. We're 100% full right now, but lots of time for you here in the second hour at 213-432-1090, or as always, send those texts, man. Let's talk hookup app. That's how you do it. Yeah, for sure, and uh, Chris will be taking your phone calls there in New York, sending them back over to us here, and uh, we'll be... Uh, <laughs> Taking phone calls and text. Adam, it, Adam does all the texts, and so we have a great team of people here. Well, as promised, it's time to find out what's going on. It's time for your fishdope.com report. Today, man, it's something we all know. Gas prices, they keep going up and up, and with summer basically here around the corner, you need the lowest gas prices, and that's Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. You can pull up to the expanded Summit Gasoline and get those low, low gas and diesel prices for your car, truck, or your boat. Summit is a huge... Uh, uh, huge area, plenty of room to pull your boat through, and plenty of pumps so there's no waiting. The bistro is full of all the things you need to have a great day on the water. They've got fresh breakfast burritos, fresh made sandwiches, beers and sodas and ice, and don't forget the 100 pounds of free ice offer. If you have a 35-gallon fill at Summit Gasoline, they're going to give you 100 pounds of free ice and fill up that kill bag for you. Go say hi to Martha and their friendly staff at Summit Gasoline. Free ice for Let's Talk Hookup listeners, and always the lowest prices on gas that's at the San Diego Sports Arena. We're going to start off our catch report with our private motor buddy, Captain Mark Wish of Pacific Edge is on the line. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, Ricky, Pete, Dave, Al. So, uh, welcome back, Pete. Thanks, Mark. Man. Quite a trip. I, I came world, back buddy. to this beautiful bait tank on the middle, <laughs> on the, in the middle of my Steiger there. It's, it looks good. Uh, well, what are we going to do about getting some bait in there and going catching something? It's really soon, man. As soon as, those, as soon as we get back from Sitka and as soon as those electronics get filled out and the bottom gets painted this this next week, uh, we're going. There's 200 pounders 30 miles from the world I headquarters know. of Let's Talk Hookup. So I think it's we need to make me, that man. happen. It's killing me. we got to go. Isn't that crazy, man? This yeah. fish is unbelievable. So, uh, mid June, guys, and only a week away from the official start of summer, although it seems kind of like it's summer. It's been pretty good fishing. Uh, nice weather. Water's warming. Setting up pretty good. And uh, up north there, it's going to be a little breezy, maybe more than bree- a little bit. Uh, them guys up there fishing the sea bass and the halibut at Rose and Santa Cruz, they better hold on to their hats here the next couple of days. It's uh, definitely getting windy. Been some pretty good fishing, though, when they can get out. Out there at 10, Nicholas, uh, been some really good signal uh, this past week here. Some world-class halibut fishing, some true uh, tanker grade there, along with some uh, big yellows also biting when they opt to do so. Some days they do, some days they don't. Yesterday they did. It was uh, pretty good fishing. And uh, big ones, though, you got to use heavy gear, guy, and pull hard. But the uh, bummer is the wind is rising out there. It's coming up. Big swell out there also, so it may not be a good deal here next couple of days. Santa Barbara Island, looks like it might be right on the edge of the big wind, so maybe you can make it, maybe not. 
uh, been pretty good fishing on the sea bass out there, and a few gallows mixed in. So, watch the weather if you try and make it. Uh, Catalina, water warming up, cleaning up. It's got those calico bass all fired up. The ones that uh, Dave hasn't invited into his little white fish bags there, but uh, they're they're definitely biting. Along with some bonita and barracuda and a sprinkle of yellows. A few sea bass scattered around here and there. One of my good friends was testing one of our customers' boats here just the other day and just happened to catch two back to back, a 36 and a 44. So there's some, nice. some sea bass around, but not a lot. It's a good situation. You know, it was sort of okay. Backside middle. And then, uh, I just heard from Danny from Fish Dope this morning. He just sent me a taxi, talked to the guys on the carnage looks like it's kind of dried up again they've been struggling the last couple of days so hopefully that uh, reloads and refires off again uh now for some of the more private the more savvy private boat guys been a bass fishing local here you know we've had some red tide to struggle with but the bass fishing is really improving water's warming up cleaning up and uh, several of our customers fishing this week some of the huntington beach spots uh, down to that Newport pipe, finding really, really good calico bass and sand bass fish in their afternoon and evenings. Been best. The green sardine hookup bait has just been killing them. And, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to see that water cleaning and the bass biting. That part's good. And then just a heads up, guys, you know, it's mid June. Water's warming and cleaning. A little bit of signal on, uh, Calpatty Yellowtail here and there. But by this time of year, I've always got, you know, some of the offshore tackle for some of our local gamesters that show up. I've always got a marlin bait caster ready. I've always got my swordfish caster ready. we always got uh, a mackerel or two in the bait tank along with whatever else we've got. And, uh, you know, it's time of year to start looking for that. Water in many places is like 65. And, uh, you know, obviously there's no volume of that stuff yet, but it you know, starting to see the early trickle typically by this time of year, so you want to be prepared for that. And then, uh, you know, San Clemente Island's been biting a little bit on that yellowtail backside yeast mostly, and in Pyramid Cove, there's some yellows there, it's been a little squid there, trying to get going. And definitely a weird year for Clemente, though, talking to some of my friends that have been fishing there. It's just nothing like it normally is, so hopefully June, it gets yeah. cranked out. For you sure. know, in terms of that kind of fishing, what can we say? You just heard Mike from the tribute talking and go. what you guys have been saying That's there. It's like, say. oh, it's just go. <laughs> go now. Yeah, They're, they're biting, yeah. And Mark, of course, fishdope.com. Danny and the boys always do such a great job. Captain Dave follows uh, Danny and the boys on fishdope.com, right, Captain Dave? Absolutely. Yeah, Danny they, and I talk all the time. All the time. How many times a day? Probably once or twice, and yeah. then if something super spectacular happens, probably, then yep. it's all day. Yeah, for it's sure. All day. All right, fishdope.com, 30 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using that code HOOKUP now, lowercase, no space. HOOKUP now, your $30 code. And Mark, how do we find you? Well, Pete, we're in Huntington Beach. We're on the corner of Bolsa Chica and Edinger by the Chevron station. And the phone number is area code 714. 714- Eight four zero four two six two, and our website specificedgetackle.com. And I'm telling you guys, it is definitely time to go fishing. We're going to have some interesting stuff to talk about next week. I'm thinking for sure it's, uh, it's yeah. looking really good. So many spots. You know, there's a little known fact about sea bass fishing, and traditionally, this is one of, if not the best weeks of the entire year to go coastal sea bass fishing, especially in San Diego, but really up and down the coast. And that's because it is always the week that we are in Sitka. And, like, you can yes. set your watch to it. Like, <laughs> I will be getting a picture message from somebody yeah. of mine up or down the beach. Like, man, you missed it. Those fish gathered up and bit really good this week. And so. when the limit goes to three on Tomorrow Sunday... Morning. Is tomorrow, it tomorrow morning? Yeah. 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 Um, that's when they go off, and then the uh, commercial guys just go annihilate them. It has lesser <laughs> to do with a lot of things and a lot more to do with the fact that, Pete, you and I will you both be out of town, yeah. and I guarantee you <laughs> yeah. there will be a bite There's that happens somewhere. Sure. We might you know, have Ricky, that, that's yeah. just like for years uh, when we were all moving into Fred Hall show, you know, you when it, guys were on their normal schedule, yeah. they would always bite, right, when we were moving into Fred Hall. It was like slam dunk guarantee. You yeah, could absolutely, so. again, you could put it on your calendar. The Yellowtail were going to bite at the Coronado Islands the day that Fred Hall set up in Long Beach yeah, starts, for sure. For sure. <laughs> hey, Mark, thanks a lot for that report, and we'll talk to you next Saturday. See you, Mark. Hey, you got it, guys. We'll see you, buddy.
Appreciate that very much. Okay, I am dying to hear, Rosie, if the roll <laughs> can continue from Cedro Sports oh my Fishing. God. What an amazing fishing you guys have been Woo, having. Yeah. Boy, we can't wait to hear about it. Rosie from Cedro Sport Fishing is up next for us. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning, guys. First of all, four of my favorite guys sitting right there at Let's Talk Hookup. My goodness, yeah. what what a great great show you have this morning. So this week's report is all about personal best. And it's probably one of my most favorite things about my job is when when anglers come back and you see the excitement on their faces when they start telling you about their personal best. And, you know, we always have yellowtail. I know, you know, Mark was just saying, oh, you know, the yellowtail decide to bite. Well, down at Cedros, the yellowtail are always biting. So we are so blessed that way. You know, he was talking about the wind. And, yeah, you know, sometimes we get wind, too. Boy, we have a great big Lee Island, Lee, and, you know, that island really protects us a lot from the wind. Um, so, yep, the yellowtail are biting, the halibut are biting, and the white sea bass are biting. Two notables this week. Um, we have uh, one gentleman that's been going down for eight years, and he got his personal best yellowtail. 48 and a half pounds. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. Congratulations. Can you imagine? Slow trolling a mackerel. Slow trolling a mackerel. And I actually spoke with him, and he said it worked him over. And he said he was blessed that he put 80 pound on. Wow. So he is. said, you know, isn't that crazy? You know, some guys were heading down yesterday, and they were they were using 40 pound. I said, I said, well, make sure you maybe you might want to put a little maybe 60 on there or something like that, you know. And and um, and I told him, I said, look, we had a personal best at 48 and a half, and he was using 80 pounds. So another boy. great, Ooh. isn't that a great one? Yeah. And then another personal best yesterday, exactly 50 pounds on the scale, a oh. white sea bass. Oh, and God. that was also caught on dropper loop. So, you know, I all I can say is if you guys are heading down to Cedros, Get your line weighed up and hang on um, because it just it never seems to disappoint down there. I know you have a guest on tomorrow that is heading down on the Let's Talk hookup trip in early July, which, by the way, the early July trip still has two spots available. Wait a minute. You two spots you got? on early July Let's Talk hookup trip to go with Tommy P? Yes. Are you yes. kidding me? Wow. Yes. Wow. Unfortunately, there was a... a one cancellation. There was one spot open, and we had an unfortunate ca- cancellation. But you know what, you guys? Get on this trip. My yeah, gosh. I mean, the, no look doubt. what they yeah, are especially tackling. Especially that's like I mean, prime, prime time. So what are the dates of that, that trip? I, let's say I think you're the first through the fifth. First, the first through, the, through fifth. the fifth. So you spend uh, 4th yeah. of July down there. It is. 4th of July Absolutely. weekend. Probably a lot of people have that weekend off. So... Uh, yeah, so you know, if you think about it, most people do have the fourth off, and um, a lot of companies are giving you the fifth off. Yeah. So you're only got to have to take three days off of work, and who knows, you might catch your personal best. Yeah. So Sign how do we? Get, but you got to get go? down there to find out. <laughs> how do we grab one of those spots to say Joe's You know, the best the first through the thing is. The best thing is just to give me a call, okay? 619-772-7570. I always like to hear from you guys because usually if you have one question, um, you're going to have a whole bunch more and you don't even realize it. So uh, just give you, me a buzz and, and, and let's the get on the thing trip. Is Rosie's got the answers at all. So how do we call you, Rosie? Yeah, you know what, you guys? Just um, you can you can look online at at all the trip dates um, at uh, sedrosportfishing dot com. But uh, I answer my phone um, seven days a week, so six one nine seven seven two seven five seven zero. Awesome. Or sedrosportfishing dot com. You can link that right on the Let's Talk Hookup website. Absolutely, or, you can. Or our app for sure. I gotta say, you got a, a real quick big thank you to Corey from MC Swimbaits. Uh, Rosie is the one who really. I mean. MC Swimbaits makes a lot of great baits, makes a lot of great colors, and Christmas tree is nothing new, but Rosie Flowers no. put that lure on the map yeah. from Cedros. And yeah. every person that goes to Cedros Sport Fishing books the Rosie away. We can always spot them a mile away because they come in and, uh, you know, they always have a big <laughs> pile of Christmas tree MC Swimbaits. And Corey loaded us up, Rosie. So. Big thanks you to got Corey. Good. Sack, of every of, of of like because everybody likes something different. We got Viejos and regulars and weedless and yeah. seven inchers and five. We got yeah. we are that Christmas, Christmas tree Viejo. No that's number one. Dude, it for gets me, bit man. so oh, good down there. Well, and thanks, you know the Rosie. thing is, is just 
You use what works, and it works. Yeah. The not you know, broke, don't fix it is an important one. Yeah. Thanks, exactly. Rosie. You appreciate it. that, and Thanks, we'll talk guys. to you next Saturday. All right. Well, while you we'll all wait. have a good one. <laughs> you too, Hey, Rosie. happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Rosie. You. Well, while we're waiting for our buddy Marcos from C4 Sport Fishing, who I'm sure is very busy uh, between all the boats and all the greatness going on at C4, I want to remind you this catch report sponsored by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego, where you can get the premier processing experience Check out the new and easier online system to book your processing for your long-range trips. Now with the addition of new team members, Fisherman Processing stays far ahead of the rest. More same-day capacity, more freezer space, and the finest customer service. Stop by their location in Old Town on Taylor Street or check Fisherman'sProcessing.com and be sure you make those reservations today. Absolutely. Well, phones are packed. Let's jump into it. They want to talk to, for some reason, talk to Captain Dave and Captain Al. <laughs> that sounds good to me, buddy. How about this time we talk to Dan? He's gone to some Rancho Cucamonga this morning. What's up, Dan? Good morning. Good morning, guys. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. buddy. Thanks, Dan. Uh, hey, so my question is for uh, Captain Dan and um, guest. Uh, you know, what does he misses with the new technology now? You know, the new reel rods and, you know, all that stuff on the boat. Uh, what is one of the things that he misses from back in the day? Nothing. No. <laughs> Me and Al were talking about it at dinner last night. It's hard to think that we used to be able to catch fish. We were talking about the uh, Ford, Ford scanning so sonar that, that they yeah. fish largemouth with now. We remember... Myself, personally, when they started the color photometer, the color meter, we all used paper graphs back then, and we thought, man, when that color photometer came out, we were like, oh, there's not going to be a fish safe in the ocean. <laughs> then right after that, the Loran C came out, and we were like, I remember working for Mike Thompson on the Patrician, and we were fishing the court or the Tanner Bank. And back in before that, you had to put it out on the table and measure where you're going in the course, and you had to make sure you steered it right. And then you'd put on the pedometer, and it, you'd start to watch the the high spot start to come up on the pedometer. And then the the Rand C made it so that you could drive right to the spot within 200 feet. And I was like, oh, there's not going to be a fish safe anymore. And we thought that was it. Mm -hmm. Then came the sonars. I know the. The uh, long range boats had them, and the and the uh, first saners and stuff had them, but we didn't have them on the sport boats and Dana Point and stuff. When we got our first sonar, then I was like, "Oh my gosh, now this is there's no fish going to be left when when I get done with this." Yeah. And then here comes this new machine <laughs> called the GPS with a map on it that showed you exactly where you were drifting and how you were drifting and a lot of us thought we were drifting the other ways and stuff and then they had a map on it and showed you and then we thought that was going to be the end all get out and then the gyro stabilizing binoculars i can't go fishing without my gyros yeah you can't I'm not, going not on these the boat. days uh -uh. so technology is phenomenal and anybody that's fighting technology i remember i took forever to go to the braided lines yeah I was a mono guy. Now I yeah. touch a mono and I'm like fishing with a rubber band. I can't, I'm like, I'm not fishing with that. Yeah. It has to be braid or I'm not playing. Yeah. And then fluorocarbon, a lot of people were resistant on fluorocarbon. Oh, forever. Yeah. I don't yeah, need absolutely. that. I don't need yeah. mono. And then I'm wait, wait so, a minute. So, Al, freshwater guy, do you have forward facing sonar on your freshwater yeah. boat? Yeah, the Lorenz Active Target. It's a, it's a game changer. My, how about this? My buddy Chris in, in Montana put one on his drift boat sure. up there. And we were literally, while we were uh, stillwater nymphing, Picking and, off and, the trout. And we were just watching the trout swim. And and it's like, there's one, and then, boop, there goes your bobber. Hey, oh. and, it's like, and you're watching it in current? In current? Yeah, well, we're, uh, there's a little bit of current. Yeah. See, what um, this one place, Holter Lake, is, is is a tributary of the Missouri River. Missouri River is huge. Right. And uh, they have these lakes that are attached to it right. uh, that as the current. So there's areas of the lake that have the, the, the Missouri River running through it, and then there's areas on the side that don't. So there's right. some currents, but not really. Right. I mean, there's some days where they get balled up, and you can just you can sit there without making a cast and watch. Watch how their personalities are acting. It's you can crazy. watch them eat. Right. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. But they don't have it for saltwater yet, right? right? I mean, 
they, they, there are guys now in like the saltwater bass series that are starting to put them on yeah. and get them dialed in. I mean, it's, sure. it's just like right. anything else. It's just a matter of it's a matter of realizing what it is that you're looking at. You know, yeah. it, it, the, right. the 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 transducer can be adjusted to what you know. Yeah, you turn it. It's like, oh, there's one. Mm-hmm. Let's right. cast over there. <laughs> it's yeah, the craziest. The, the thing. thing about them is, is the the window when you cast is super skinny. Sure. Right. So, I mean, you can cast a bunch. Yeah. It, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. A lot of getting used to, actually. Yeah. Huh. Well, for some reason, Marcos uh, is not able to get through. Chris is going to keep trying. Uh, there's some some issue with the phone over there at Seaforth, but we'll see how it all goes. But, uh, yeah, crazy well, stuff. Well, I had a great text in the meantime. It says, good morning, fellas. I have a question for Captain Al and a question for Captain Dave. You guys have done so much and caught so much fish in your lives. My question is, what is the one fish that's on each of your bucket lists? That's from uh, Rick in, uh, in Orange. Rooster fish. I've never okay. got a rooster. Well, you're sitting next you to need a guy to go that down. to go live yeah. every day catching a man. I think that's, that's, right. that's a good yeah. fish on the list. I'm, I'm going cool down to sleep on his couch shortly. I like it. <laughs> you got your own room in Marley's room with the monkey. But uh, mine's a tarpon. I tried it, and I'm going to ICAST this year, so I'll be back out there to give it a try again. That fish eludes me every time I try to fish for it. They catch them really good the day before. They catch them really good the day after. But when I go, it, we look at them. While, while you're at ICAST, what yeah. you should do is get hooked up with somebody that uh, that goes fishing for black drum just on the other side of the coast there uh, on the Atlantic coast. I went, I did that with uh, Benny Florentino. He has a guy called Benny, and he hooked okay. you up with the right guide. All right. And uh, that black drum fishing, if you've never caught one of those, uh, that's super that's fun, cool. man. Yeah. You catch them around like the the um, the bridges and stuff like that, and they're big. Okay, yeah, but, I have uh, to try it. I'm going to be there for a week. <laughs> yeah, so that, we have to try it. That tarpon is such a humbling fish too. Like it's hard to get. It's hard to get and keep a hook into them if you're not a guy that does it all the time every day like I was I was so surprised at like man they just they throw hooks so good we were fishing them on artificial so you know there's the, the weight of that but like it was a it was a fish you'd get a bite you'd come tight you'd do everything you know quote unquote right and then they'd come up and you know have those big uh, gnarly jumps and just shake the lure shake the lure shake the lure like it was a it was a very humbling fish to to get very much yeah so. and but, I, very, but very cool and yeah. so worthy of of the bucket list the I, I, I uh, fished with Dave Pfeiffer from Shimano and uh, a guide in Key West uh, several years ago and we we're, he's the, key, the the dot, the guy is cutting chum. You know, he gets a bunch of chum from the shrimp boats, and then he just cuts and cuts, and then you put a piece of this cut bait, and then you drift it back in this incredible current that's running. And I swear, I could not feel the bite. And it, it, it's such a subtle bite from these 150 pound tarpon, right? And it's like, and then. Um, the guy puts his hair. Let me show you here. Here's one. Here. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, I, he, I couldn't feel it. I mean, it's like you really. It's such a soft touch, but it's 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 definitely an angling fish. We were fishing them with ba- basically calico bass gear. You know, a, a Tranks 300. We were fishing them in Venice, Louisiana, and we were fishing swim baits. You know, four four and five inch swim baits, and uh, it was an area of really. I mean, brown water, like, to say it was clean brown is like the dumbest thing in the world, but, you know, it's so stained, you know, it's not like our chocolate water, but like heavily, heavily stained water, but you could see little breezers of bait fish, and, uh, you know, you'd you'd keep making casts of these breezers of bait fish, and and, uh, and then all of a sudden you'd get just a little little tick, little calico bass bite, and you'd come tight, and a 120-pound fish (laughs) just just comes launching out of the air, and I've never in my life seen a fish that is so upset to have a hook in them. They just yeah, hate that's... it. It's so, it's a really cool one. Like, yeah. I got, I've only had one little taste of it, and I was wickedly addicted. Like, I'm I'm really hoping a couple years down the road, I get, I get to go do that get again. Do it's that really again. cool. That's cool stuff. So you gotta do it, Dave. I want let's to. Let's go. Really yeah. I'll go I with you. Go. I well, want to try it. Well, let's go jump in the phones. That sounds good to me. How about we got some very patient callers. How about Dave in Anza here up next on Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning, Dave. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Well, Dave from Anza is now Dave in the Eastern Sierras. Just want to give you a report from up here. Ah, yeah, we've been up here for about you, 10 Dave. days. Oh, been up here for 10 days, got another week to go. We're using June Lake as a base camp. And um, i got to say, it's probably prime conditions for whatever you want up here right now. You know, last year at this time, we were waiting for things to open up because of that tremendous snowpack, but not this year. I know, Pete, you touched on it earlier. 
Everything you want to drive to is open now. The Mammoth Lake Basin, Red Meadow, even Tioga Pass opened up this last Monday, too. So if you want to drive to something, it's, it's open. There is quite a bit of snow up high. I hiked up some lakes. There's plenty up there, though. And as far as the fishing goes, um, they're stocking these lakes up here really well, catching them every time I go out, and um, ready to wrap up some rainbow trout and bacon to have with my eggs this morning. So, um and also, one thing I want to throw in, too, you touched on earlier. We're getting our own RV. We, you know, we travel extensively throughout the year. But I've seen this Adventures in Camping in operation up here, and they sure make it look easy. In the campground where we're at, we've seen them. They come in, spot the trailer. People come in, enjoy their stay. They leave, and then Adventures in Camping take the trailer off. So we didn't have our own rig. That would be awfully tempting to do that. So... But all in all, you know, it's a great start to the season up here, and it looks like it's going to be a good one. That sounds great, Dave. Thanks a lot for that Eastern Sierra report. Have fun up there. Appreciate the call this morning uh, very much. I have a great text here. Uh, It's from... Elo, Elo uh, in Long Beach, and he says, been going to Playa del Sol for 30 years and never got get my hooks, swivels, and leaders right. What size hooks and swivels and leaders do you recommend for Eastgate fishing between July and September? Just want to take uh, transplant a storage box and heavy tackle box. Um, and uh, so, Dave, that's you. You live in the uh, in the southern Baja, yes. and so what should he take? I mean, you heard Chris from Smokies. Uh, that's biting. Marlin... Uh, tuna, Dorado, everything. Yeah, and the best thing, like I tell everybody when they come down to see me, is the best thing to do is whatever your pongolera or your... There's no reason to overthink this thing because every day is different. You're going to go out on a charter boat with somebody on their boat. They got a really good handle on what's happening and what's biting. And I haven't been on a charter boat yet that they didn't have everything you need. Yeah. They got everything. I don't take, when I go to the Palmas de Cortez for our Far Spectacular, uh, I don't take anything. Right. I think this is our 30th annual this year. I used to take a rod tube. I used to take, Mm -hmm. you know, big tackle box. I don't take anything. Well, no, and it's so expensive to bring any, yeah. any extra stuff on the boat. And if your reels, let's just say you travel like I do. And thank God for my wife. She makes it so easy for me to travel, booking all my travel. I mean, I'm everywhere all the time. And Kelly Girl's always constantly making it super easy. That's so nice. all I have to do is grab my backpack because I don't wear I wear a T-shirt and shorts every day and yeah. flip-flops. I don't bring anything. And if you bring a reel, gang, if you bring it on your carry-on, you can't have line on It's the silliest thing yeah you have to check it yeah if it has a line it. on it yeah i've been at the i've been there because you might tie up the pilot or something i've been in, t- in tijuana is the weirdest thing because they they go through my bag every single time every single well just bag. look at you yeah probably, yeah. The list. probably the hair. He's on the list no doubt <laughs> but the line the fishing line is the craziest thing you sit there and you're trying to strip it off while they're trying to take it they want to take the reel you already know that you're trying to strip it off and you're shaking because you're standing there and there's a hundred people in line mm. there's no reason to bring anything really isn't they know what hooks to use they know what lure to use they know what everything you tell them what you want to do you want to go rooster fish fishing they're going to rig you up a couple of rods with a dot circle hook, snelled circle hook, and you're going to have a handful of ballyhoos or some live baits, whatever you want to fish with. You're going to go marlin fishing. You're going to go do that. But you can't bring all that stuff. You don't yeah. want to. There's no reason to bring right. it. And when you're traveling to Mexico, if you're a dude, you just bring some flip-flops and some shorts. You don't need nothing but your carry-on. Right. If you bring Dallas sure. or you bring Kelly, we got to bring five suitcases for two days. I understand that. But <laughs> but me and Rick or Al or you, we're traveling yeah. with a backpack. Yeah. That's what so I so just uh, just if you want to bring some stuff, um, Come you know, see Ricky. just bring some, bring some fluorocarbon. Rick knows uh, what to set you up. Bring some fluorocarbon because uh, they might need it down there. 100 pound, 80 pound, 40 pounds. But if you C- bring a car, you got to check your luggage. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, it's... Don't you so check your you, luggage? No, I keep mm-hmm. backpack. No. Me backpack. and my backpack. Yeah, there you go. No. Hey, um, Danny from Fish Job says, tell Dave he can come up to my house in the Keys and catch one, uh, a tarpon off the dock. Nice. Right. There so there, there you go. go. Okay, tell yeah. Pam to get my yeah. bed ready. Let's yeah. know when you're ready for us. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way, including a big block of your phone calls. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. 24 years ago, I visited this amazing place called Jaraguay, Archipelago. I just could not get enough 
half of these amazing islands, natural beauty, friendly people, and phenomenal fishing. I knew I had to spend more time there. Moving forward to today, here I am, a fishing lodge owner. Hi, this is Valerie Hilbridge from Queen Charlotte Safaris in beautiful Haida Gwaii Islands, British Columbia, Canada. We are a boutique lodge just steps from the Sand Strait Harbor offering a truly unique fishing adventure. Our fishing is world class. You will fish for king salmon, halibut, link cod, and much more. Our fishing grounds are untouched, unspoiled, and surrounded by stunning scenery. We are dedicated to making your adventure an experience that will be a lifetime of memories. We will welcome you as friends, and you will leave as part of the Queen Charlotte Safaris family. You will come for the fishing, and you'll come back for the memories. We are booking now. Please give me a call at 1-877-815-2892, or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or website qcsafaris.com. Hello, this is Captain Mike Totter from Search of Sport Fishing. Alongside my colleague, Chef Josh Evans, and our dedicated team, we invite you to join us aboard the Searcher. Our fishing trips range from day and a half to eight days, available May through November, and include charter options. We're committed to upholding a legacy of top-notch customer service, delicious food, and a friendly and talented crew. Book your fishing adventure online at searchofsportfishing.com or call Rachel at 619-226-2403. That's searchofsportfishing.com. We look forward to welcoming you aboard. The lighter the bite and the cleaner the water means one thing. Leave a thinner leader for more natural presentations. That's where Seaguar Gold Label Leader Material shines. It's Seaguar's thinnest leader material yet. That means it's even less visible underwater and creates more natural presentations for better catch rates on leader shy fish. With exceptional knot and tinsel strength, this advanced leader material is now available from 2 pound test for fishing trout in the Sierra to 80 pound test for big yellowfin in Guadalupe. Get Seaguar Gold Label at your favorite tackle dealer or learn more at Seaguar.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. Busy day on the phones, busy day on the text. If you want to get through, it has been a busy morning. 213-432-1090 and keep those texts coming. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, let's jump in the phones. You got it. How about this time we talk to Russ? Russ has called us from San Diego this morning. Hi, Russ. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Hi, guys. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, great show. Uh, quick question. Okay. Um, how much... 100 pound braid line do I need on my reel for tuna nighttime fishing before I get spooled? <laughs> you know, bluefins. What do you think? Bluefins don't take a tremendous amount of line. They do. I'm certainly not saying that they don't, but I, I would say about 400 yards would be your 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 minimum safety amount of line. Four, four. I that would be a number that I'd be comfortable with. Anything 400 plus, I think, would be an appropriate amount of line for catching a for catching a big tuna. What do you think, Al? Do you agree with that? Well, I seen some posts uh, a couple, three days ago that they were spooling reels for 500 yards on there. Yeah. Um, but it depends what kind of platform you're on, too. If, you, if you're on your own platform, you can chase them around a little bit. Right, yeah. But if, if, you're, you're, on, on, but if you're on an open party sport boat... You're not right, moving. Then, and yeah, right. It, it's also not just about them taking every inch of line, but like if you're, if you're fishing with a reel that's got a... Like, I think you could probably get it done in most cases with 300 yards, but right. that means that a lot of the time in the fight you're now fighting the fish with only a, you know with a with a minimal amount of line left on your reel which means the diameter that you have to work with is very small every time on the you reel, turn the handle it's and good. now you're yeah. not gaining as much and you've got to turn the handle three times as often to put the same amount of line on the reel so like you need to still have some diameter in your spool when you're fighting them but yeah. but for me if I had a reel that had 400 yards of 100 pound I'd be I'd, I'd, I'd feel comfortable but it's interesting the big blue fern are very different than big elephant big elephant big marlin stuff like that that'll empty a spool but for whatever reason big blue 
infant to do, do not. Uh, yeah, and that doesn't mean they don't fight just as yeah. hard. And, oh, yeah. and it doesn't mean that it can't and won't happen. For sure there's stories of guys sure. getting spooled, especially the, the fish that happened when you were gone, that big fish that uh, that was in the three-quarter day fleet. Like For whatever reason, that batch of fish was extra mean and they took a bunch yeah. of line. But more commonly, they'll, they'll pull a bunch of line off your reel and then dog you and be very difficult when they come up to color and they don't circle nice and flat and predictable like they're a tough fish but a yellow shake their fish, head yeah exactly like it's a lot more difficult fighting fish close to the boat where a yellowfin will just go and go and go and go yeah. and go not to say that that's the rule every time but probably more more often than not yeah hey thanks a lot for the call i have a great text here from jason he didn't say please uh let us know where you're texting from that's always helpful because people want to know where people are Absolutely. 207 area code i don't know where that is hello everyone i wanted to thank you Cap- it's, 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 it's a scratch on Captain Dave here. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I wanted to thank Captain Dave for changing what I catch. I am so happy to be a member of your saltwater guide. Captain Dave is the only person that has ever called me personally to tell me he wants me to help, help me catch more fish. I especially want to thank Captain Dave for everything he does for the veterans of our great nation. Thank you right. very, very yeah. much. Thank Did you, you write that? Yeah. <laughs> that Kelly girl said that to you. <laughs> All right. No, but, thank you very, very yeah, much. Yeah, no, nice words there, Jason. Thank you for the call for sure. So, again, make sure you tell us where you're call- your phone number as well as where you're, where you're texting from, too. Um, uh, fun technical question for both of you guys, and, and I feel like a, a different answer for both depending on the type of fishing that a lot of you guys like to do. I'm loving this show. Two amazing fishermen sharing their expertise and knowledge. I really appreciate it. I keep hearing you both talk about chumming. Can you talk a little bit more about what this looks like as a private boater? Uh, you've mentioned chum buckets. You've mentioned chumming fish. Um, how do we do these effectively? Uh, give us, give me the rundown. That's from John and Whittier. Well, I'll start and then Al can come in and finish this off. Al makes a phenomenal chum buddy system, which you put your chopped up sardines and squid or whatever leftover bait you have in it and he has that tied to the back of the boat and it has like a plunger handle. So the whole time it's laying in the water, it's actually working and it's chumming. There's never ever a time when you're anchored fishing that you shouldn't be chumming. Whether it's with the chum buddy or if you're fishing yellows or sea bass or something, you're throwing some live bait over the side, bonita, barracuda, yellowtail. They're all going to require some type of prey density level to increase in the water to bring the fish for some reason if you have some current and you have this food sprinkling down like snow coming down on the fish it sparks them they want to bite when they see all the food in the water it's called increasing the prey density level so there's never a time when you're doing when you're i I can't even imagine fishing anywhere i chum when i trout i know i'm not supposed to say it but (laughs) i chum when i trout fish i just chum because that makes the fish bite and it brings the fish to you that that there's different levels. If you have a small boat with a small bait tank, you can't chum a lot of live bait because you'll run out of bait. So you use the chum buddy. And then Al takes it to a whole different level. Like when we're in the back bay, Al's got the chum system going full speed before he even tells me that it's time to put the line what in the water. What are you chumming, Al? I keep a bunch of sardine. Yeah. You know, whatever I got, but yeah. I have a freezer. Just chop it sardine. up in your chopper. Do you make yeah. a chum buddy? I mean, it's called a chum tube. Chum <laughs> tube. Okay, because there's somebody yeah. patenting yeah. a chum buddy. Yeah. Sorry, chum tube. So chum it's tube. And you chum sell them? Chum tube, yeah. Do you sell them? They're 60 bucks, yeah. 60 bucks. Mm, and and, and it. what's it encompass? It's it's a tube it's with a. It's a four inch piece of PVC that's 18 inches long. Uh huh. Right? That has a butt cap on the bottom, and then the top unscrews with a three quarter inch hole and a piece of three quarter or PVC with a fitting on the bottom that I make uh-huh. that chops everything chops up. Chops everything up. Yeah. And then it just sits. How does it attach to the boat? I just have a rope on it. Uh-huh. You know, it loops around so you can put it on your cleat. Yeah. And, and depending on what kind of boat you're on, I can make the handles longer. Like if you're on a big old 65-foot boat and the freeboard's tall, I can put a big tall handle on it. How does one obtain <clears throat> one of those? They can get go go to my we- website at captainclowers.com and I have them on there. Or they can call me direct, 619-800-3474. Okay. That's and, awesome. and if they want to see them, uh, go to yoursaltwaterguide.com, and we have some videos on there. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, in action. In action. Okay. Yes. I like yes. it. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming away, including a big block of your phone calls and texts. It's Let's Talk Hookup, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio.
Hi, this is Tommy the Fishmonger from Tunaville Market and Grocery and the TV show Fishmonger. I've known Yosef Husseini for over 20 years, and he's the expert when it comes to real estate. He's helped me with estate planning and multiple estate questions that the average guy like myself just doesn't understand. Yosef's not only a fellow angler, but he's an amazing realtor that specializes in helping us in the angling community find their ultimate home. If you own a home, get a free, no-obligation home evaluation now online from Yusuf by typing in SoCalHomeEval.com. All you do is put in your address and you'll get that report fast. Yusuf is a SoCal real estate guy to go to. He's helped me and many of my customers and family members to find what they are looking for in a home. He understands the real estate market like no other, so take it from Tommy the Fishmonger. Yusuf's the real deal when it comes to your real estate needs. Go to SoCalHomeEval.com and I'll see you at Tunaville Market and Grocery. This is Captain Art Taylor from Searcher Sport Fishing. Your hook is one of the most important links to catching fish. And at Searcher Sport Fishing, we use and recommend Gamagatsu hooks. The Gamagatsu Nautilus hook is best for tuna. And now with a variety of sizes all the way down to size 4, Gamagatsu hooks are the ones to use. It's important to be prepared with the right tackle when you come aboard Searcher. So that should include Gamagatsu hooks. This is Bob Hoots at Costa Sunglasses. Visual signs are a critical part of my fishing program, from bay bass to bluefin. I wear Costas to see what's out there. Costas are built with advanced polarization technology with our 580 lens, designed to cut through the sun's glare while providing enhanced color to see more fish. Costa was founded by a group of anglers wanting a high-performance lens for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your adventures. CostaSunglasses.com. If there's one thing we like, it's choices. And at your San Diego County Ford dealers, you can find yours with the all-new 2024 Ford F-150 and the range of powertrain options. Whether it's a gas engine with the best-in-class towing, powering up with the F-150 hybrid and the available Pro Power on board, or the all-electric F-150 Lightning. What you choose to do with that much power is up to you. Tough this smart can only be called F-150. Visit your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Having a great time here this morning, talking fishing with the boys from your saltwater guide. What a great time, man. This yeah, is awesome. Super good you, time. You, you promised they'd be sharing a lot of killer info, and how great is that, Chum? I mean, just everything. This is a lot the of chum fun. Chum buddy, yeah, for sure. Let's jump back on the phones. All right. How about this time we talk to Jeff? Jeff's calling us from Mission Beach this morning. What's up, Jeff? Hey, guys. Great show. Um, I had a question for Dave. If you could have a half an hour of wide open fishing, what species would you target? Ooh. Thank you. Well, if I was tarpon, I never caught one, so that would be pretty spectacular to see that. To see wide open tarpon fishing and be able to catch one after the other or hook one. I just want to hook one because I know, like Rick was saying, the first thing's going to happen when I hook it, he's going to go skyrocketing out of the water. I'm going to freeze because it's going to just be insane. He's going to throw my hook. I've already talked to every guy that I've tried to fish with. I know I'm going to freeze. I'm going to panic. I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be that guy. I know because it's going to be incredible to see a 100 pound fish come flying out of the water with my line hanging out of his mouth for a split second. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the coolest part like just knowing yeah you, you, you're you going to freeze because it's such a cool thing you know like if, if you've got ice in your veins for that you've uh, you've either done it a million times or it's not the right sport for you you know like you're supposed to, you're supposed to get fired up about that Fr- freeze it's yeah. gonna <laughs> shock it's yeah gonna shock like what it's gonna be i finally hooked them and then yeah. it's gonna be gone and then yeah. be like that's that what's <laughs> happening there? then you have to cast and wine some more yeah that's yeah. it yeah uh, Mike from Laguna Niguel says, "Does Dana Lanning have any fish processing options available, like Fisherman's Processing? If you call f- or text Fisherman's Processing, and you tell them you're going on a trip, likely they'll be able to set that up for you. They'll meet you at the boat." You you are correct for Dana Landing. My my wonder is if he's talking about Dana Wharf. Uh, oh, having our buddy yeah. Hanson on. Well, Dana Landing in San Diego, Mike, but not Dana Wharf. Dana Wharf does not have any fish processing. Well, Todd Manser and his sister Shayla are trying to put that together. Yeah, they so should. they got a little bit of stuff going on over there. They don't have the processing capabilities like you guys have down here, but Shay 
Kayla is doing her very best to put that together. So it's a great idea. You can have some fish processed at the fish market, but it's once again you're going to have to call. You're going to have to let her know that there's a chance that you're going to get one of these tuna. Can I come in and have you yeah. process it for me? Right. I mean, so many, so many, you know, sports fishers up in that area. So much good access to that big bluefin tuna. What a great, what a great idea on their part, and a great service to offer to the people, you know, Dana Point to be able to have somebody professionally cut up one of those big bluefins. That's a great call. Right, exactly. And she's got the vacuum packing capacity and all that cool stuff that they have down here. She just doesn't have the people to do it. So yeah. you've got to let her know ahead of time so she can bring in the people. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's jump into the phones. You Rick. got it. How about we talk to Brian calling us from Wildemar this morning. Hey, Brian. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing today? Great. What's up, buddy? Good. Good. Yep. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, question and a comment. I'll start with the comment first. Uh I love how the the Max of family is so competitive. Um, it, 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 you know, uh, Ricky, blink, blink twice if you want me to call the fire department. Because <laughs> only whether whether uh, you, you're trying to top Dallas by by spending two hours in the room with Dave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we have a good time, no doubt. When we're super, pu- super pumped up for Sitka. No worries, no worries. Yeah, whether it's being Captain Elevator or, or being, um, you know, Captain Al, uh, for family, because I'm, a, a, I've got a seven-year-old, a thirteen-year-old, and a sixteen-year-old. Do you do you run family trips? Uh, is it only out of the bay, or do you run out of Dana Dana Point, uh, like when the Dorado are running, or anything like that? I keep I, I keep my boat in San Diego Bay at Marina Cortez, and absolutely, I'm a family. I take families fishing all the time. Been doing it for many years. So, depending on um, their ages and stuff, and if they rely on me to pick the trip for them, I keep them in the bay. The bay trip, little four hour bay trip, is a great start for the young kids, and then you move out to the to the half days, and then take them offshore. When people come through the tackle store that are brand new and wanting to get into fishing, and I got, you know, exactly as you're describing, Brian, I got a couple of kids and I just want to get action. Al is who I send everybody to. It, it's the perfect trip. Yeah. It's easy. It's calm waters. Al has done it for years and years and years, and, and you know, and both the boats stuff. that he have are perfect for that type of fishing. And it's short. You know, you're going to yeah. do it for a few hours, and you're going to catch a bunch of fish, and then you're going to be done and go home yeah. and have a great time. It is the, if you're wanting to introduce, a, you know, a younger person into fishing, or not even younger, just introduce anybody. You don't have to worry about seasickness. You don't have to worry about gear. You don't have to worry about tackle. It's like it's the perfect trip. Yeah, and right. uh, uh, how much is a, a half day trip? Four on the hour on the Riviera. It's nine ninety five. Wow, and you can take up, to six, up to six people. Six so people. Wow. Like, Hundred and thirty three bucks a piece or something for yeah. a, a nice And everything's platform. included. Everything's included Tackle. included except for their license, lunch and their beer. Yeah. They can okay. bring their own beverages and stuff. Yeah, that's Yeah, cool. basically they show up in and the And it's a big luxurious thirty eight foot. Yeah, it's boat. a beautiful thirty six foot thirty six r- Riviera. Riviera, yeah. 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 It's yeah. it's a nice boat. Yeah, when yeah. you want to take a break you go sit down on a big plush couch. Right. And, you know, instead Cl- of sitting on a five gallon bucket. Click the like, TV. On my boat. Yeah, yeah, click the T V or get up on the bridge with me and watch all the Navy ships and stuff go by. Yeah, it's a Cool experience. No, how do we cool. how do we book it? Captainclowers dot com. Captainclowers dot com, or they can call me direct. I have a, a cool auto booking system on the website. Oh, okay. do you? Yeah, or okay. they can call me direct at six one nine. Eight zero zero three four seven four. Yeah, and they can also get a hold of me over there at Your Saltwater Guide. I got a bunch of videos and stuff okay. over there, Tim. On that one, okay. Hey, uh, uh, Steve uh, from Amorovius writes: I took my first saltwater trip on the Sum Fun in 1977. I was 16, and I'm still at it full speed today. Thanks, Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. Always nice to hear that. Yeah, right? that's Thank rad. you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. All right, let's jump back into the phones. This time, we're going to talk to Rich. Rich is calling us from Brad. Bradley this morning. Hey, Rich. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Well, thank you. Good morning, everybody. What a spectacular show. I'm blown away by the phenomenal information density level. <laughs> I've got a little bit of uh, hope for that guy, but a uh, little bit of hope. We lost. Ah, shoot. Rich, we're, we're losing you right when you got to the meet. Well, shoot, Rich, hopefully you can give us a ring back in. How about we jump back in and talk to John? John's calling us from Mira Mesa this morning. Hi, John. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Yeah, good morning. I uh, appreciate the time to be able to give a quick uh, kudo call to Captain Al. Um, I help broker a uh, charter between with him and my cousin and his kids from San Francisco who had never fished before. And um, I tagged along just to 
help out and to pick Al's brain. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, he put us on, this was last week, he put us on a wide open sand bass bike to start the trip off and then um, finish the day on a, in another, another area where we got a bunch of spotties. And that's uh, that's all the kids are still talking about. And Al, I just want to, you know, Al ran a really good uh, um, top notch operation. I can't say enough about it. And uh, uh, they, they want to do it again. So thank you, Al. Absolutely. I, I, I remember that day like it was yesterday. It wasn't too long ago. That was last week. And you, <laughs> and you also got a bunch of information for your yak fishing, too. So like like I said, you can call me anytime. And any questions you have, I can answer them. And as those kids grow up, they keep coming with me. And next thing you know, we'll be offshore fishing. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, we have a special treat now. Uh, Benny B. from The Real Hustle Magazine is on nice, the line. Benny. Speaking of big treats. Good morning, Benny. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, uh, uh, Captain uh, Captain Hanson, your saltwater guide, introduced me to you, and uh, boy, oh boy, I saw that those the size of those trout you catch in Colorado, and you went and did that with him, right, Dave? No, Bill oh, yeah, did. Bill oh, Barney, Bill Barney did. did it. Yeah, Bill was that, maybe it was either Bill or you, but both of you, and uh, that 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 certainly drew my attention. I don't I'll know if you've seen. Did. I've I know you've ever seen uh, Benny uh, and his videos there on on Real Hustle, but it's it's. Fun. Phenomenal, That's right? cool. Yeah. So tell us about what you do, Benny. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you think of fly fishing up in the mountains especially, and most people think streams and rivers. I'm actually more of a stillwater fisherman. So what that means is lakes and ponds and reservoirs. And what I seem to find is the trout of multiple species, such as brown trout, rainbow trout, cutthroat, cut bow trout, which is a hybrid between a cutthroat and a rainbow. Long story short is the trout in these reservoirs and the still water seem to get bigger, in my opinion, due to not having to fight the current and scavenge for food. Whereas in these lakes, there's so much forage from different types of bugs, other fish, crawfish, as well as shrimp that come up from. So they just swim around effortlessly and just sit there and gorge. So that's kind of one of the reasons we seem to find the bigger average size of trout. And it also feels good to launch my old flats boat. I'm from Florida. And just get out there with a good crew with a beautiful scenery and put some uh, fish in the boat. So, um, yeah, I had a great time taking out Bill. He had his rod in the water for less than a minute before he got his first bite, and he really got to uh, experience the real hustle, you know, uh, experience with one other angler on the boat. We had a few double ups, and it was just a great time all the way around, so we really enjoy it. And those big stillwater nymphing uh, trout, those rainbows especially, they pull hard. They have, t- I mean, they look some of the, the size There's of the fish no you catch. Doubt. They look like salmon. They're so huge. Big tails, <laughs> and they, they pull broom. hard. Yes, they are not shy to put up a good fight. I mean, they come up, they jump, they break surface, shaking their head. They'll take 30 to sometimes even 50-yard runs multiple times before you get them to the net. And it's just an all-around great time. It's the first time in Colorado I had really found that feeling of I grew up in Florida fishing for snook, redfish, trout, other species. And, you know, it put up a similar fight to where I was like, you know what, this is it. So I'm very thankful to have figured out the still water and get on that good average size fish. And, and, and so tell us about Real Hustle. What do, you, what do you do on your channel there? It's a YouTube channel, right? Yep, so Real Hustle, spell R-E-E-L. Um, I like to make videos, and they're usually a one-day experience where I'll launch my boat, I'll take some anglers out, and we will film from start to finish and create that episode and drop it once a week on the channel. Now, I've been doing a lot of subscriber giveaways more recently where I'll pick, you know, people who are subscribed, people who like the videos, watch the videos, comment on them, and I'll give them a call and say, hey, it's your turn. Let's get you out for the Real Hustle Uh experience. And a lot of them are usually pretty excited to also be part of the film. So that's kind of what I've been doing more recently and what I intend to do throughout the summer and, you know, into the ice fishing season over the winter as well. So where do you go? It's someplace in Colorado? Correct. So I live in the highest Rocky Mountain town called Leadville, where Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday and old cowboy gangsters used to live. And as you wrap <laughs> through the mountain... That's near Bill, right? <laughs> yeah, Bill's just on the other side, which is wild. But how the crow flies, we probably live less than 10 miles from each other, but to get to each other, it's almost an hour and a half to go around <laughs> all the peaks. That's funny. Um, That's- 
I have taken my off-road vehicle over the peak and got to him quicker or my dirt bike in the summer. But, yeah, so where we seem to fish is an area called South Park where there's three reservoirs. We've got Antero Reservoir, Spinning Mountain Reservoir, and 11 Mile Reservoir. And there's a pretty awesome average size of fish in there and quite a few. So one thing I really enjoy, and I never knew this, because fly fishing in Florida, we always strip to streamers, which basically is a bait fish presentation where you, you chuck it out there and you rip it back towards you as if you were working a jerk bait or you know just cruising in on a spoon but now we're throwing these three bug nymph rigs underneath a bobber at, yeah so you you I, this is a pretty average is we'll fish about 13 feet of water i'll put my first bug five feet down from the bobber and then two and a half feet in between so you got one off the bottom one kind of mid column and one a little higher in the column and you sit back and you watch your bobber dance in the waves and when that thing sinks that means the fish pulled down on your rig and it's just a great feeling to see your indicator slash bobber sink and then you set and just feel the dead weight and then it's just a fight it's an explosion from there so much fun well hey we we're running out of time but how do we get a hold of you if we want to go fishing with you see your videos etc so i would look up real hustle on youtube that's r-e-e-l hustle and if not i I've also got Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all those social media platforms that kind of help push the YouTube further. But check it out on YouTube. Leave me a comment. Say you saw me, heard me, and we will try and get you out there soon. All right. Real Hustle, Benny B. Thanks a lot. I can't wait to come up and go fishing with you. No doubt, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Have a great right. afternoon. Appreciate it. Hey, we already ran a last bait, so it's time to pick a winner. Captain Dave. Going to do us the, we have, let's the prize see. Wait coin. a minute. One, two, three, I, I four, got, five, six. I got it. Yep. Okay, you got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to flip the prize coin, and we have today a texter as texter. our winner. Congratulations to John in Whittier. You have got yourself that two three-quarter day pass from Dana Wars Sport fishing and the four pack of Promar's brand new GT4 fluorocarbon. Kevin yeah, Dave, buddy. how do we find you? Your saltwater guide. I'm impossible to not see. Yeah, your saltwaterguide.com. Everywhere. Everywhere you go, and like constantly. Like guide. like over 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 everything. everything. And they uh, and Al, how do we go fishing with you? 